Lego is not playing around. It reported earnings this morning just shy of $1 billion on $4 billion in sales. The company seems to be managing costs while trying to appeal to girls, for example, also functioning in this digital age overall. Jurgen Knethorpe with us now. He is the CEO of the company joining us. Thanks very much for being with us. We know Lego almost tripling revenue since 2007. And if your company continues, keeps pace, I'd even say half a quarter, you're going to be on track to pass your competitors, Hasbro and Mattel. Do you have that in your sights? No, I don't. I mean, the motto of this company ever since its founding is that we want to be the best, not the biggest. We are uh, a company that has never made an acquisition. We grow purely organically, and our focus is to constantly renew ourselves and innovate our business. So we really focus on delivering the most outstanding uh, play experience, and then we'll see where the growth takes us from there. But speaking of competition, I have to bring up Mega Blocks. They are much cheaper than Legos. In fact, they're about half the price. And in some ways, Mega is copying your model. I know the company has a relationship with brands that kids love. Thomas the Tank Engine, Hello Kitty, Halo video game, Barbie even just recently added. Are you concerned at all that Mega is copying your strategy and executing more cheaply? Well, I think Lego has uh, three types of competitors. One is those who obviously uh, copy very directly and pretend to be uh, Lego and, and isn't. And then there's a second group that is uh, following our lead and, and copying many of our concepts and uh, producing bricks that are somewhat compatible with ours, but also slightly different in quality. And then there are those who do very different things, who are very appealing to uh, to boys and girls around the world. And it's actually the third category I'm the most concerned about, because I think uh, as long as we stay very innovative, it's natural to have uh, followers. But it also is very clear when we look at the market share and, as you suggest, the pricing, that consumers are opting for the leading brand and the highest quality experience. Well, one thing you've certainly clearly done right, big brands, big associations. We know Lego has had great success using film licenses for themes for some of the sets. I know some that are in my own home with my own children, The Hobbit, Star Wars, Toy Story. Are there new film licenses coming up? Yes, uh, we are quite conservative in the licenses we work with. We look for the modern day fairy tale. We think uh, Star Wars and Harry Potter and The Hobbit are great examples of that. But this year, Disney is also releasing uh, The Lone Ranger with Johnny Depp, and we are tying up with that because we think it is the start of a great new adventure. So we are looking for those kind of licenses and not just every new movie, every new weekend. Uh, Jürgen, without being too PC, too many PC undertones, a lot of people say that girls, when, um, of course, children we're talking about, prefer to role play, boys prefer to build. So I know about a year ago you launched Lego Friends, and the, the actual figures are sort of less blocky, less robotic looking. Uh, how are you feeling about your efforts to close what some people have called a gender gap for the toys? Well, I think uh, the success of the launch of League of Friends, which has really exceeded our wildest expectations and done extremely well in Seoul and across the Americas and anywhere in Asia and, of course, in Europe, proves to me that uh, it is very, of course, very condescending to suggest girls are not creative and don't like to build. And I think it also shows we've had a lot of girls building with Lego products through the, the years before now. But now we have an offering that's so much more cool and relevant to the girls, and that's why uh, Lego Friends has caught on so well. And I know it's even a question of color. I've read research that say young girls are more sensitive even to, to color at an earlier age. And I know part of the Lego Friends has sort of lavender, what I would call Easter egg colors. Obviously, you, you did the research on that. Now, I know um, you also launched some board games. Are you pleased with the traction that this product is making, and again, versus your competitors? We're very pleased with the traction on the board game simply because it is a category that's quite big and it has been a category that we think has lacked innovation. It's been dominated by some very classical great games through the generations. And we think the introduction of building and the ability to change the game concept in some simple ways has added new energy 
uh, to the board game category. So for us, it's a specialty assortment, it's, it's a niche, it's a way of uh, bringing the LEGO experience to life in slightly different categories. It's not a major uh, emphasis for us, but it, it has been an interesting experience. And this year, for instance, in the US market, we saw the LEGO creation area, where you build different things and people have to guess what you're building. Uh, was a huge success again, and it's been on the market now for three years, so we think there's uh, longevity in some classic LEGO game experience there.